assignment. So here's uh, assignment three. There are two questions. Both of them are about the conditional probability, the Bayes theorem and so on. Uh, you know two different ways to do these calculations. Either you can proceed with the definitions of the conditional probability and multiplication rule, or you can draw the tree diagram and uh, find the answers. So I'll show you both ways. Uh, question one with the definitions and equations, and then question two with the tree diagram, OK? So if you look at the first question, it says in a certain state, 25% of all cars emit excessive amount of pollutants. Uh, so at the bottom, it is given uh, the notation that you can use. Uh, these are suggestions. If you want to use other letters, that's OK. So A as the emits pollutions, no pollutants. And then uh, it says if the probability is 0.99 that a car emitting excessive amount of pollutant, pollutants will fail the test. So there you have uh, the conditional probability. Okay, what is the condition? If the probability is 0.99 that a car emitting excessive amounts of pollutants will fail this, the state emission test and the probability is 0.17 that a car not emitting amount will nevertheless fail the test. So you have passing or failing, okay? So you can have failing the test, knowing that it is actually a vehicle emitting excessive amount of pollutants or passing or failing the test, knowing that the car does not actually emit the pollutants, okay? So your known fact is that whether the car actually emits pollutants or not, because it is given that 25% of all cars emit pollution, pollutants, okay? So you have two possibilities, passing the test given the car emits pollutants, failing the test given that, or the other one, if you have 25% of cars emit <coughs> the pollutants, that means the rest, 75% of cars will not emit excessive amount of pollutants, okay? So let's write down the probabilities. PA is emits pollutants, that is 25%. So not A, so let, uh, I'll say A is complement, that is one minus 0 0.25, which is 0 0.75. <clears throat> then you have fail the emission, emission test. It says uh, 0 0.99 that the car emitting excessive amount will fail the test. So probability of failing the test given <coughs> the car emits pollutants. What is that? Probability 0 0.99. Then it says the probability is 0 0.17 that the car not emitting amount of pollutants will fail the test. So failing the test is B given not emitting pollutants. That is 0.17. So what is the probability you have to find? What is the probability that the car that fails the test actually emits um, excessive amounts of pollutants? Okay, so what do you want to find? Probability. If a car fails the test, um, uh, that vehicle actually emits pollutants. So actually emitting pollutants is A, given that fails the test. So knowing that the car fails the test, what is the probability that it is actually a vehicle which emits pollutants? Okay, what is the probability that a car that fails the test? So you already know that the car fails the test. So that is the given one. It actually emits pollutants. So when you are finding this conditional probability, read carefully, okay? With these wordings, you should be able to identify what is the given one. What do you know? Okay, because Okay, based on that knowing, what is the probability uh, which is given? So the given one, the given event, and the actual event, event that you have to find it from this wording. Okay, so this is what you want to find. Okay, so let's start with the definition. If you use the tree diagram, that is also okay. okay. But I'll use the definition just to, so we have both ways, right? You need A given F, okay, A given F. If you use the 
the definition of the conditional probability, this is A intersection F divided by F. Okay, so if you probability of F. If you can find these two probabilities, then you are done. Okay. The next thing, uh, how do you find PF? That means probability of failing the test. There are two ways that <clears throat> a car will fail the test, right? It emits the pollutant and fails, or the car does not emit, but still fails. So the probability of failing the test can happen in uh, two parts. That is actual car, which emits pollutants will fail in the test and uh, actually a car does not emit pollutants, but it fails the test, okay? So if you can add these two intersections, that will be the PF. And at the top, you already, you have P A intersection F. So if you can find these two values, then actually you are done, right? Now we need the multiplication rule. Okay, remember the multiplication rule uh, for conditional probability, what is it? If you have A given B, right? This is the definition, then the intersection is a even b times b b. So you are going to apply that to these parts. Okay, so let's start with a intersection. Um, okay, now failing the test, uh, we have the letter b. So let's stick with that one. Okay, failing the test is b. Okay, a intersection b is what? Probability of B even A times P A. Okay, so this is the conditional probability, the multiplication rule, right? And then you need the next one, probability of P given S complement times P S complement. Now we have all the values. P B given A is 0.99. P A is 0.25. Plus P given A S complement is 0.17. Times P S complement is 0.75. So if you find these values, you will get 0 0.2475, 0 0.1275. When you add these two, you'll get 0 0.375. So that is your um, PP. Let's write it. Uh, these two together. Okay, so yeah, intersection B and S complement intersection B. So this is your PB. Now let's uh, Put these values here, right? A intersection B is here. What is it? Point two four seven five. P B the addition of it and the other one point three seven five. So if you do this calculation, you'll get point six six or sixty six percent. So here's the answer. Okay. So that is using the um, equations, okay? Right. Here's the next one. We'll use a tree diagram for this one because we have uh, four possibilities for the first level, uh, right? It will be easy if I use a tree diagram. It says there are four cashiers at a supermarket and a survey was done to measure the satisfaction of customers at checkout about the service of these four cashiers. So these are the uh, survey results, 75%, 80%, 90%, and 95% of customers said they are satisfied on the service provided by each cashier A, B, C, and D respectively. So what are these 75%, 80%, 90%, 95%? Those are the customers said they are satisfied given they got the service from A is 
satisfied given the service provided by B is 80%. Okay. 90% is satisfied given the service was done by C. Okay. C satisfied on the service provided by each cashier. Right. If selecting a cashier at checkout is equally likely. Okay, so there are four cashiers selecting which cashier you are going to go. It is equally likely. Well, what does that mean? All these four cashiers, they have the same chance of being selected by a customer. Okay, and then after they select the cashier, the customer rates the uh, cashier, A, B, C, O, D, right? So you can start it like this. And then let's go back and look at the uh, probabilities we have to calculate, okay? The first level is, You go for the uh, cashier. A, B, C, O, D. Right. So what is the probability of selecting cashier A, B, C, O, D? What are these probabilities? How do you find that? Now you have done the assignment, so tell me what are the probabilities you use there? Equal. Equally, so what is the probability? 0.25. 0.25. So the total probability one should be divided equally. So that will be one over four. So all of these will have 0.25. Okay. The next step is whether you are the customer is satisfied or not. Okay. So the satisfied probabilities are given. Okay. It says customers said they are satisfied on the services provided by each cashier, right? So A, B, C, and D respectively. So if A was chosen, let's say S for satisfaction given A, what is that? 75%. So not satisfied given A will be what? One minus that 0.25. We go to the next cashier. Satisfied given you selected the cashier B, it is 80%, so not satisfied will be 20%. Satisfied given C, 0 0.9, 0 0.1, given D is uh, 0.95, not satisfied given D is 0 0.05. So these are the complements. Okay, so if you multiply along the paths, you get the intersections. So that is what we did here, right? So if you draw the tree diagram, you will have this one, the first level is this one, the first level. Then this is the second level, right? So you multiply along the paths, right? So that's the same thing. Well, we need only, okay, we need the not satisfied, satisfied, all of them. So let's do all, uh, we have eight paths, right? So what is the first one? A intersection S, A intersection not satisfied, B intersection S, B intersection not satisfied and so on. Okay, then you can multiply along these paths. 
right? So what are these values? Do you have the values of these numbers? Zero point one eight seven five. The point one eight seven five and this zero point zero six two five. Point zero six two five. Yes, and then you have point zero zero two, right? Yes. So this point two five times point eight is point two. Uh, then you have point two five times. Point two is point zero five. Uh, then you have point two five times point nine is point two two five. And then point two five times point one is point zero two five. Finally, point two five times point nine five. Is point two three seven five, and the last one point two five times point zero five, which is point zero one two five. So if you add these values together, you can get one, right? Okay. So what do we need? The first one is the probability customized satisfied. So which means you have to find all the Intersections where you see S satisfied. See, see satisfaction can uh, you can get the satisfaction either by from A, B, C, or D. So all these four you have to add. So that will be this will be point one eight seven five plus point two plus point two two five plus point two three seven five. Okay, so you can find it. Then not satisfied will be. Uh, one minus P S because whatever you got the answer here, you can use it and find uh, P not satisfied. The next is uh, the probability A given customer is satisfied. What is that? A given customer is satisfied. So you don't have it in the uh, the tree diagram. What you have is S given A. These are not the same. So you can go to the uh, use the definition. A intersection S, it's there, 0.1875, and you divide by PS. PS, you have the answer here in the first part one, right? So I put this answer here so you can find the <coughs> value. Then you need the probability D, given that the customer is not satisfied. Again, so it will be D intersection NS. Now you divide by the given one is P NS. Again, well, D intersection NS is there, 0 0.0125, you divide it by uh, probability not satisfied. Okay, so it will be uh, this sums. And you can get the, uh, get all the answers. Okay. So is this clear to all of you? Well, if you want the tree diagram for the first question, that's also okay. You can do that, right? So you can get the answers in either way. Okay. Any question from the assignment? Everything's clear? Okay, then shall we move on to the lesson for today? We have to continue chapter four, uh, starting from section three. Okay.
Okay, so I changed the paper. Can you see the next section? 4.3 continuous random variables. Can you all see the new topic? Yes, madam. All right. Okay. So last time we talked about discrete random variables and then we calculated the average variance and so on and also the probabilities. That is by preparing the probability mass function or the table. Okay, so that table is, it displays all possible excess and then their probabilities, okay? And using that table, you can calculate the probabilities and also the average and the standard deviations or the variance. Uh, now today let's look at the continuous type of random variables. Uh, in the discrete case, you have uh, the whole numbers, no decimals or fractions, but when it comes to continuous, continuous random variable can contain any value within a given interval. If you exist within the interval A and B, each and every value point within that interval, um, they will be described in random variable X. So they can have all the fractions, decimals and everything. Okay, so therefore, when you draw a graph, not like the uh, probability mass functions, in, in there you have a line graph or a straight line for a specific value. In between them, you don't have anything. Okay, but when it comes to continuous case, suppose your random variable exists in between A and B, uh, all the values, each and every point within A and B will contain a certain probability value. Therefore, your graph will be a smooth curve like this. You can see the smooth curve, okay? And we, when we have a distribution, um, we call it for continuous case, we call it the probability density function. That's the name we use with continuous random variables, PDF. For discrete, we use probability mass functions, PMF, but for the continuous case, we use probability density function. It's the same thing, but two types of variables, so you have two different names. And we denote it as fx. PMF, we denote as px, but um, the continuous case, PDFs, we denote them as fx, okay? And if you want to find a probability at a certain um, range, you have to find the area under the curve, okay? So for a given random variable, it, if it can contains values within A and B, like this one, and suppose the function, the probability density function, it has a certain um, pattern like this. Then if you find the area under the curve of this graph, that will be the total probability one. Okay, so just like the PMFs, if you add all possible probabilities for all Lexus, they add up to one. Okay, so likewise, for continuous case, if you find the area under the curve uh, within that given interval, it, will be the total probability one. Now, in order to find this area, you have to do the integration. Okay, since uh, in this course, we are not looking at them because not all of you are familiar with integrations and it's not required uh, in your coursework. So we are not going to do any calculations or anything. So if you want to find the probability, you have to integrate, right? So uh, now remember for continuous case, if you find PC, that is at a certain point, you have this straight line, so there's no area, the point probability is zero, okay? The point probability is zero for the continuous case, but in the discrete case, it is not, right? In discrete case, you can find Px equals two, you can find, but with continuous variables, Px equals two, it is zero. It is a, the point probabilities are zero, but you can find the area under the curve for a given interval. Let's say this is x, uh, not x, um, f and g, two points f and g. Then if you want to find what is the probability that x will contain values in between f and g, then you have to integrate your function from lower limit to the upper limit. Okay. Right. So that is how you find the probabilities, but we are not uh, going to do any calculations like that in this course for you. Okay, so you have some uh, extra information here. Uh, you don't have to worry about that, okay? So for continuous random variables that we are talking in this course, 
we have other methods to find probabilities. You do not need any knowledge on integration, okay? Right. So today let's look at some special probability distributions, uh, discrete and continuous. I'm not sure whether we have enough time for go for continuous case, but let's try the discrete uh, distributions first, okay? That means the variables which can contain only the whole numbers, discrete type of variables. We are going to talk, there are many distributions, okay? Because um, you know that if you want to find the PMF, you can prepare the table uh, with those uh, two columns. Okay, I hope you can remember what we did last time. If you can list down all possible Xs and their corresponding probabilities in a table, you call it the PM. Now the problem is sometimes there can be situations X, where X contains large number of possible values. Then preparing a table uh, with lots of pages, it's not practical, right? It is not practical. You can't do that all the time, preparing this table, right? And sometimes there can be some special features or characters. So there's no need to prepare a table. You can easily find it with some other ways, okay? So therefore, what uh, statisticians have done, the mathematicians, they have figured out some common features that you see in uh, some random variables and uh, group them into um, special distributions and gave them some fancy names, okay? So here are a few of the, of the distributions that we usually use. We have the uniform distribution. I will uh, look at them in detail, uniform distribution. They have some special features, okay? So you can, Identify by looking at how a random variable behaves, whether it follows the uniform distribution, okay, or you can have the Bernoulli distribution. Bernoulli distribution. You have something called um, binomial distribution. Binomial distribution. Then you have something called the negative binomial. You have hypergeometric, have geometric distribution, uh, multinomial distribution. There are many. Okay. We have Poisson distribution. We are not going to look at all of them. Um, we are looking at few of them where uh, that will be necessary in your study area. So we are looking at the uniform. Bernoulli and binomial, they goes together. They are special cases and negative. We are not going to look at any of these, but let's look at the Poisson also. Right, so we are going to look at only four distributions in this course, very easy. And you'll see what are the common features and what are the situations you can use them, okay? So let's start with the discrete uniform distribution. You have the continuous form of the uniform, so therefore we use the discrete word in front of the uniform distribution, okay? Uh, now by looking at the name, you can identify uh, why we call it uniform? Okay, what is the meaning of uniform? When you say uniform, what does that mean? Any idea? You have uniform for schools, what does that mean? Evenly distributed? They have, yes, they have the same, it is common for everything, right? So all of, uh, when you have a uniform, it is same for everybody. So that is the idea. Um, for the uniform distribution, you know the total probability is one. The total probability one is equally distributed among all possible outcomes. Like that example assignment, uh, we have the all four, um, cas uh, four cashiers have the same probability. So that is the uh, uniformly distributed, right? So whatever the, uh, number of possible outcomes you have in the sample space, all of them will get the same probability. In order to get the same probability, what you do is you divide the total probability one by those number of possible outcomes. Say for example, if random variable takes k different values, then you say you have a uh, uniform distribution if probability of x is one over k. Okay, so k can contain values one, two, three, okay, so some numbers, okay, we don't know, whatever the values you have, okay. Um, say, for example, um, 
think about that uh, uh, rolling a six side dice rolling a six sided dice balance one that means all six sides have the same equal probability so what is the probability uh, that one side will get one over six okay so this is uniform distribution okay so this is a uniform distribution so you can write x follows uniform distribution x follows uniform distribution mm. um, the values are one two three up to uh, six okay so in uh, or in simple words uniform one six okay so that means x 1 2 3 up to 6 all of them will have the same probability right so rather than preparing a table like that you can simply write it like this px equals 1 over 6 uh, and if you write it in the, the correct way according to rules it will be something like this px equals 1 over 6 when x is 1 2 3 or up to 6 and zero otherwise the okay, ow is for otherwise sometimes we use ew elsewhere right so this is the usual way we represent a pmf so you, so you do don't need a uh, table or anything by this also you can get the idea okay and then the mean and the variance of the distribution here are the equations right so you can easily find them so in this case what is the mean so this is the ex this is the y x. If you use this equation, if you roll a, a dice, your expected value will be what? 6 plus 1 over 2. Why? Because k is now 6. We have 6 possible outcomes. 7 over 2 is 3.5. What is the variance of x? k square, 6 square, minus 1 over 12. That is 36 minus 1 is 35 over Okay. Right. So let's try another example. And you can see that now if you are if you when while you are doing research or collecting data, if you can see that there are certain variables, um, whatever the number of outcomes they have, all of them will have the same probability of occurrence, then you can say it is that it is uniformly distributed. Okay, so you can say the variable is uniformly distributed. Okay, so here's another example. Mm. Let's say uh, a spinning wheel. Do you know the spinning wheel? Fifteen equal sectors. What is the spinning wheel? You see in carnivals and so on, uh, you know, divide it into equal sectors. Now mine is not equal, but you can do it. Okay, so all these sectors, 15 equal sectors. Uh, and you have a small uh, stopper here and you spin the wheel. And uh, before you spin in the wheel, so these are marked in, the numbers are marked up to 15. So you give a number, you say, okay, I'm uh, picking five, then you spin the wheel. And if the wheel stopped at five, if the stop, if the, when the wheel stops, the stopper is under five, then you win, else you lose. Okay, so these are, there are uh, small games like that in carnivals. Or you choose, okay, um, to bet a value and say um, uh, even numbers, right? And then you spill the wheel. And if, it, when it stops, if the stopper is under, uh, an even number, then you win. If not, you lose, something like that. So um, if you have this kind of a wheel with 15 equal sectors, okay, then you can, um, uh, your x is the winning value. So x can be uh, dis uh, described as a uniform distribution. So x will have a uniform distribution. What are the values? One up to 15. 
So what is the probability of getting a winning value? All of them have the same probability, 1 over 15. So x going from 1 to 15 or 0 otherwise. So this is how you uh, explain the uniform distribution. OK? Right. So what is the probability of getting, what is the probability of your win is 5? Okay, it's 1 over 15. Whatever the number you have here, anyway, you get 1 over 15. What is the probability of getting an even number? What about that one? What is the probability of getting an even number after you spin? Seven out of 15. Yes, 7 out of 15. There are only 7 even numbers, 7 out of 15. So odds? 8 out of 15, 1 to um, 15, right? What is the probability of getting a multiple of 3? Multiple of 3. Yes, what are the multiples of 3? 3, 6, 9, 12, and 15. There are 5 out of 15. So likewise, you can... Four, three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. Okay, so five, right? Am I right? Okay, right. So likewise, uh, uniform distribution. It's very simple. Okay. So whenever you know uh, all possible values of the random variable has the same chance then you go for a uniform distribution, okay? The next is the Bernoulli distribution. Do you know Bernoulli? You know Bernoulli, right? Who's Bernoulli? Jacob Bernoulli? You have done physics, right? You have the Bernoulli uh, law. Okay, so that's the same Bernoulli. Uh, now, actually, there are several Bernoullis. Uh, if you uh, do a Google search of a Bernoulli tree, yes, you can try it. Just search in, uh, in Google the name spelled correctly. Okay, if you type uh, Bernoulli tree, it will give you the um, all the Bernoullis in this scientific field. So not only one is there, there are many different, many Bernoullis actually. So when you have the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, um, when you see a theorem or a law or equation with the Bernoulli, it is not the same Bernoulli, right? There's um, uh, Jacob Bernoulli is there, Nicholas Bernoulli is there, Johannes Bernoulli is there. Christopher is there, Jacobs, uh, one, two, three, four, several, Jacob. Um, Johannes, one, two, three, four, several. Nicholas is one, two, three, four, several. So actually, they are uh, the same family, um, uncles, nephews, cousins, and so on. So one Bernoulli is, uh, and they were in the you know scientific field. Uh, the, so when they do research, uh, sometimes the uncle is the supervisor and everybody is the uh, student or sometimes uh, the elder cousin is the supervisor or uh, a younger cousin is the um, student and so on. So they have uh, developed many theories, uh, published several papers, but all of them were known as Bernoulli, but not one, okay, several Bernoulli. So just uh, for fun, search the Bernoulli tree, you'll find a lot of Bernoullis there. Now this one is the Jacob Bernoulli, um, uh, who did the, the same physics Bernoulli theorem, okay? So the idea behind the Bernoulli distribution is whenever you have experiments or variables, you have only two outcomes, only two, success or failure. So like that, uh, tossing a coin. If you toss the coin looking for a head, your success is head, getting tail is the failure, okay? So there are situations, there are a lot of random variables that you have only two possible outcomes, even the gender, male or female, it is uh, Bernoulli distribution, right? So you define one as a success, then automatically the other becomes the failure, right? Say, for example, if you um, uh, 
hit a target if you can hit the bullseye okay if you hit if you can hit the bullseye at the very center then it is a success if you hit outside those are failures so this is bernoulli okay so usually they we defined uh, the probability of success as theta okay some probability and then the probability of failure since you have only two possible outcomes the failure will be 1 minus theta right okay so you are doing it only once so either you end up with uh, one success then the other will be failure or no successes you know one success or no success at all right so x can be only 0 and 1 okay so see you can see some examples uh, passing or failing an examination okay so you have only two possible outcomes pass or fail right uh, losing a race either you win or you lose right uh, so now in this case we say Bernoulli trial because you do it only once you you sit for an exam once either you pass or you fail but suppose you are going to take the exam again and again until you pass or you know several times that means you have Bernoulli trials repeated Bernoulli trials okay so another thing is um, you hit the bullseye you hit the target with a small arrow 10 times okay so you, the first one you may have a success second a success third maybe a failure fourth is again failure fifth is again failure then you get another success you know likewise for these 10 hits you will get combination of successes and failures in such situations we go for the binomial distribution so Bernoulli it's uh, not usually um, in practice um, you do not do something just for once and stop okay if you think about a sample we have a sample size is not one Okay, say 10, 25, 30, 100. Uh, so then you end up with binomial distributions. Okay, so you have uh, 100 students pass and fail results. So that is binomial distribution. So each and every student, you will get either pass or fail. Second student, pass or fail. Third, pass or fail. So likewise, you have several binom uh, Bernoulli trials that becomes binomial distribution. So Bernoulli and binomial are actually um, uh, they are related. Uh, a binomial is a collection of Bernoulli trials. Or you may say Bernoulli is the binomial distribution when you have only one trial. Okay. Now, in order to have a binomial distribution, it is not only that you have two possible outcomes, okay, but there are other conditions that you have to satisfy. Now, these are the three conditions that you have to satisfy. You have number of trials fixed. Usually we use n for number of trials. Okay. Okay, you have n number of trials. You decide it at the first. Okay, I'm going to hit the target 10 times. Or I'm going to take this exam 10 times, 5 times. I'm going to flip the coin 100 times. You fix the number of trials. It is fixed. Then getting a, uh, getting a success or a failure, it is same for all n trials. So this is like tossing a balance coin, you know, getting a head is 0.5, getting a tail is 0.5. Whether you flip the coin 100 times, still the probability of getting a head is 0.5, getting a, a tail is 0.5. So the probability of success and in other case of failure is same for each trial. All n trials, it is the same. So it is not changing like the first trial, the probability of success is 0.5. Second trial, probability of success is 0.7. It's not going to be like that. All the trials, the probability of success, of success is same. The next one is these n trials are independent. If they are not independent, then you can't use binomial distribution. So that means like um, with replacement. Okay. So if you pick a card randomly to check black or red, now that is binomial, only two possible outcomes, right? You pick a card to check whether it is red card or a black card. So two possible outcomes. Suppose you are going to pick cards, uh, say 20 times, right? And then each and every time you replace the card, then only you get binomial distribution. If you do it without replacement, the probability of getting a red or a black card, it's going to change from one trial to another trial. I explained it in uh, earlier lesson. Doing uh, without replacement, trials are not independent, then it will not be binomial. But 
If you pick the cards, 20 cards, one at a time with replacement, then you have independent trials and you can use binomial distribution, okay? So not only the probability of success, only two possible outcomes. In addition to that, you have to have these conditions satisfied, okay? Um, see, and what, what can you do with these situations? You can find probabilities like this, okay? So you flip a coin 12 times, what is the probability that you will get five heads, exactly five heads? You can find that. Or you can find what is the probability that you get more than 10 heads. So you can find these probabilities by developing the binomial distribution, okay? Or you um, uh, uh, pick another example. Uh, Picking, let's say, 20 cards with replacement. Then what is the probability of getting exactly 10 blacks? You should be able to find it using the binomial distribution. What is the probability that you get less than uh, five rates? You can find these probabilities using the binomial, okay? So this is how you find it. Now you don't have to memorize them. Okay, these equations will be given and uh, even we are not using these equations. Uh, we have a table reading, uh, a table available for binomial. From that you can easily find the probabilities, but this is the equation, okay? So what do you see here? For binomial distribution, you have two parameters. Parameters means the values that will define the shape and the location of a distribution. There are two parameters. What are they? The number of trials and probability of success. See, in this equation, you see x is the random variable. Then you see n and theta. That's all you see. x is the variable, see? n and theta are the parameters. Okay, so depending on the value of n and value of theta, you'll get you know, different probabilities. So that's simply it. And the possible values of x there should be zero. Okay, because your x is what? The random variable x is the number of successes. You may end up with no success at all, only one success, only two success, or maximum all n successes. So possible values of x will be zero, one, two, up to n. Okay. And this is how you find the probability. Now this n x is the factorial, do you know a, a factorial is? How do you find a factorial? If you use a scientific calculator, this is another way to write this is n choose x. This button is there in most of the calculators, combinations. Or else you can use the factorial and this is the, um, the actual calculation. Do you know what the factorial is? How do you find three factorial? Anybody who can remember? Three factorial is what? Someone who knows or try, try it, three factorial, what is it? Nobody knows? is three times, two times one. That means you multiply starting from three, reducing one at a time all the way up to one. So what is five factorial? Five times, four times, three times, two times one. So this is six. This is 120. Okay. So this is the factorial values, but again, um, I'll show you how to read the table so you don't have to worry about these calculations. And by definition, zero factorial is one. Okay, so just know this information. It will be useful uh, at some times, okay? And then the mean and the variance of binomial distribution, are well, they are defined, so very easy. When you know the parameters n and theta, these are the equations. This is the expected value. This is the variance of a binomial random variable. 
Okay. So what are the, okay, um, I'll explain another situation where I can use this. Say, for example, there is a clinic of 1,000 patients and uh, uh, if you want to find, you know that uh, the gender, male or female, in general, it is 50%. So among these patients, uh, suppose you take a sample of 100, what is the probability that um, um, there are 50 of the patients are males? What is the probability that more than 70 patients are males? What is the probability that less than 20 patients are females? Okay, likewise, you should be able to calculate these probabilities uh, using the binomial distribution. In that situation, the probability of success is 50%. Because gender, male or female is 50%, and depending on the your sample size, n will be the number of trials, the sample size. Okay, well, let's try a small example, then I'll show you how to read the binomial table rather than using these calculations. But it is always good to know what is actually happening behind the scene. So let's do one example with calculations. Okay, again. You don't have to memorize any of these equations, the means, variance, or these binomial equations. You don't have to memorize them. Okay, if you have to use them, they will be given in the exam. Okay, right. So here's an example. Find the probability of getting five heads. Okay, if you get five heads, automatically there will be seven tails in 12 flips of a balanced coin. Okay, so you are going to do 12 flips, so that is the number of trials. See, n equals 12. Since it is a balanced coin, the probability of getting, okay, so let's say head is the success. The success is getting a head. Probability of success is one over two or 50%, right? So this is the uh, theta probability of success. Now, what is the probability you want to find? Find the probability of getting five heads, x equals five. If you get five heads, automatically there will be seven tails, right? So you simply write x's. So your random variable x will be what? Number of heads. Your number of successes is number of heads. So what is the probability x equals five, right? Yeah, okay, I'll use the equation. Equation is n choose x theta to x, one minus theta to n minus x. What are the possible values of x? No heads at all, one head, two head, or all 12 heads, right? So that is the uh, sample space of x. Now let's plug in the values, x equals five. So n is 12, x is five, Theta is 0.5 to the power x, x is 5, 1 minus 0.5, n is 12, 12 minus 5. Okay? So if you can find the calculator 12 choose 5 uh, button, you can do that. Or oh, let's do the actual calculation. 12 minus 5 is 1. See, always. At the bottom, when you add 7 plus 5, you get the top 12, right? And when you have 0.5, it is very easy because 1 minus 0.5 is also 0.5. Even you can add these two right? exponents. So you'll end up with 12 factorial, 5 factorial, 7 factorial, and 0.5 to the power 12. Because you can add, it's the same base 0.5. Okay, who can find this number? Can you find 0.5 to power 12? I will do the rest. Okay, so I'll show you how to um, find this factorial part, okay? So what I can do is, if you are going to do this by hand, I'm going to expand the top up to the maximum at the bottom. Like this, so it's the same thing. So seven up to seven factorial, I expand. And without expanding the rest, I'm keeping it. Smaller number, I exp uh, expand it. Seven factorial, I keep it because I can cancel this. This value we have to find. Okay, there are some other values we can cancel, right? We can cancel four times three, 12. 
5 times 2, 10. So what is the rest? 11 times 9 times 8. Okay, so find these two values, multiply it, and you can find the probability. Can you try it? Can someone share the answer with us? Yes, but it's 11 times 9 times 8. Okay, so I think I got the final answer, 0.19, Anuja. Uh, so what about the others? Uh, can you tell me the two values, 0.5 to power 12 separately and 11 times 9 times 8 separately, anybody? Come on, I cannot uh, continue without your passive participation. Okay, so Ashini, final answer is there. Um, so 0 0.5 to power 12 is 0 0.000244, yes. And you have 792, thanks, Sandini. Right. So if you do this calculation, your final answer will be this one. Right. Now with the binomial probabilities, usually you end up with very small values. See, for example, 0 0.5 to power 12, this is a very small number. Sometimes you will get it in this format. Calculator 10 to the power negative 4. Right? You will get it like this or e to the negative 4, something like this. So that means you have you know four decimal places to the left, three zeros, right? Uh, and the other thing, uh, do not round up until the last minute, right? Keep it, keep the 0 0.5 to power 12, calculate it in the calculator. Use it and multiply it by 792 without rounding it, okay? So otherwise, you'll end up with uh, rounding errors, okay? Right. So thanks for everybody who gave the final answer, 0 0.919, uh, 3359 actually, okay? So that is the probability. If you flip a coin 12 times, the probability that there will be exactly five heads is 0 0.1933. Okay, right. Is this clear to all of you how to use the uh, formula? But again, I'll show you how to use the table. That is the important one. Okay, so now what if you want to find what is the probability? The number of heads is less than or equal to three. How do you find this one? If you expand, this will be less than three is getting either no heads at all, or maybe one head, maybe two heads, maybe three heads, because you have less than or equal. So you have to apply this formula how many times? One, two, three, four times, right? So it's not, you know, easy time consuming, it's, uh, you know, not practical. So if you have more than that, right? So using your calculator and finding them one by one, it's uh, it's hard actually, it's, and we do not recommend that because we have binomial tables. So I'll show you uh, 
uh, how to use a binomial table in order to get these answers very quickly. Okay. Mm. Uh, so there's another uh, question. I will leave it uh, for a while and I'll show you the binomial table. This is a part of a binomial table, right? So just to get familiar with what you see here. Okay. Get familiar with what you see here. You can see at the very top, uh, these are the uh, probability uh, or at the very first row, you see possible probabilities of successes or thetas. Okay, so these are the theta values you can get. 0 0.01, 0 0.02, up to 0 0.5. Okay, so the other part of the table, it contains maybe 0 0.6, 7, 8, you know, likewise, the binomial probability, right? And then you have the number of trials. Okay? The number of trials, 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. On, in this table, you see only up to uh, 6 trials, okay? So, um, and then you have the rest of the table, 7 trials, 8, 9, 10, and so on. So this is only the first page of a table, okay? So just to get familiar with it, what you have is, you have all possible thetas, some selected theta values, and the number of trials <coughs> um, in each row, set of rows, okay? So each column will contain the probability of success and rows are the number of trials, okay? Now, if you just go and look at the uh, one column, look at the first column. The probability of success is 0 0.01 here, okay, first column. And you see if the number of trials is two, the probability that x equals zero is here, right? And likewise, you see at the bottom line, always you have the total probability one. See, in each section of these, these sub tables, at the very bottom, see you have one. Can you see that? one all the time see all this the last row of each sub column it is one why is that that is the total probability and this is the cumulative distribution or cumulative probabilities can you remember the cdf that means you add everything uh, one by one until the end so when you read a certain probability you read the cumulative probability not the exact probability Okay, so that is what should be what you have to understand very thoroughly. When you read the table, you always read the cumulative probability, cumulative probability. So I'll show an example from this table. Okay. Right. Hmm. Okay, I'll expand it. Okay. I'm going to choose this column, okay? I'm going to choose the fourth column. What is my theta? 0 0.04, okay? Now suppose a certain uh, binomial random variable, this is how you write it. It has num uh, the number of trials five and probability of success 0 0.04. You know that a certain random variable follows binomial distribution with number of trials five and probability of size success 0 0.04. So whenever you have to find probabilities, the first thing you do is you get the table and find the table where it contains the probability of success theta 0 0.04 column, okay? So you find this column and it says the number of trials is five. Then you have to find the column uh, which has the number the number of trials five, see this sub table, okay? This is the table which contains the number of trials. The okay, number of trials is five. So what is, okay, so here's 0 0.04, here's five. So we are going to use only these values in our calculation. This is what we want. Number of trials five, Probability of success 0 0.04. This is the part of the table we need. 
Okay. Now let's try to find some probabilities. Okay. If you want to find, now remember this is cumulative. Okay, so um, understand this very carefully. Okay, follow me very carefully. I want to find x less than or equal one. Less than or equal to one. Now this is exactly the cumulative density. This is how you write F1 or the CDF1. And exactly this is what you get if you read one in this sub table. So here's our one. Okay, so here's our one. So this probability is 0.9852, always the cumulative. Probability X will be less than or equal to one is what you get from the table, 0.9852. Okay, so similarly, if you want the probability X is less than or equal to always less than, okay? Less than or equal to two is you get two and here's the value, 0.9994. Now you may be wondering, how do you find greater than? Okay, so what if you want x greater than or equal one? How do you find this one from the table? Now you can't do it straight away. The table will always give you the less than. Now when you have greater than or equal one, what do you do? You have to go for the complement, right? So x greater than or equal one means what are the possible values of x? So I'm going to write the possible values of x greater than or equal one. So one is there. You have to add one, two, three, four, and number of trials is five. So you have to stop at five. That's the maximum you can go. So you have to, you need all these things, right? But with the table, you can't do that. You don't, you don't know how to read greater than, but you know how to read less than. How do you write this px greater than or equal one in less than? How do you do that? There is a trick. Can you figure it out? How do you write the same thing in less than? Think about it. What is the rule that you can use in probability? Can you remember the complement? What is the complement? All the outcomes that are in the sample space, but not in whatever that event. So you go for the complement of this one. Now, X greater than or equal one contains one, two, three, four, and five. What is the complement of this one? But you can't see what is the value that you cannot see, only zero. So this is same as one minus P X equals zero, right? Or you can write this as one minus P X less than one, right? It's less than one. So how do you find it? In your table, well, zero is the last one you have, so you use it, one minus 0 0.8154. So you use the complement whenever you have to find the greater than signs. Is this clear to all of you? You do the one minus. Okay, let's try another one. But if you want to find the probability X greater than two, greater than two, not equal sign. Which means this contains two is not included. So P3, P4, P5. So what is the complement? Complement will be zero, one, and two. How do you write this one? Zero, one, and two is probability of X less than or equal to two. You do one minus, so you get the answer. What is PX less than or equal to two? You already have it from the table straight away. You can get it's 9994. So you have the answer. Is this clear to all of you? How to use the complement? Be careful with the equal sign. Okay, so here you have the equal sign PX greater than or equal one. Here you don't have. Greater than two means two not included. So three, four and five. Complement is zero, one and two. Other way to write zero, one, and two is x less than or equal to two. Okay. 
and then you do one minus because it's the complement. P x less than or equal to two, you can read it straight away from the table. Point nine 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 four. You do one minus, and you get the answer. Right? So that is how you do it. Now, how do you find exact probabilities? Say, if you you want P x equals two, how do you find this? X equals two. Any idea how you can do that? How can you do x equals two? If you read the table, what do you get? If you read the table, you'll get. If you read two, you'll get everything up to zero, one, and two, right? So what is this? If you read the table for the value two, you get everything up to zero, one, and two. But you need only two. Only two. This is only you need. That means you have to get rid of zero and one. How do you get rid of zero and one? You read up to zero and one and subtract it, right? So you read up to zero and one, okay? And then you subtract this value from x less than or equal to. So if I write it, like this, this area you don't need. So this is same as you read up to x equals two, and you subtract the one above it. That will give you p x equals two, right? So let's go back to the table. Okay. So here's x equals or less than or equal to two. And one above it is x less than or equal to one. You subtract it, so you get point nine 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 four. Subtract the one above it, point nine eight five two. When you do the subtraction. That is the x equals two. Okay, so it is very easy. You go for the Equals two, you read the two value and subtract the one above it. So when you subtract the one above it, you uh, get rid of the values you don't need at all. This is set, right? So let's try another one. And not for this table. Say for example, in another example. Okay. So suppose you need x equals five. How do you find it from the table? You read all the way up to five. That means from the table you get x less than or equal to five. Then you subtract everything below it, so that will give you x equals five. Why? Because when you read the table for five, you read everything up to five. What you need is only five, so you subtract everything up to four, right? So you subtract this part, the unwanted one, up to four, so you get exactly five. Okay. So not only that, if you want to read in betweens. That also you can do by the subtractions, right? Any question from this part? Any place unclear? We'll do another example. Okay. So here's another example. This is another part of the table. Okay. So in this table, you see uh, probabilities of successes starting from 0 0.05, 0 0.115, and so on. And in this one, the number of trials is 15. Okay, so in this example, the number of trials is 15. Do we have it? Uh, so this uh, this part of table is for the binomial distribution with number of trials 15 and the probability of success. Point okay. Right. okay. If you look at this um, yellow colored area, what does that mean? This is exactly the probability x less than or equals seven, right? When you read seven, right? So that value is zero point 
9958. Okay, now let's do some examples. Can you find the probability x is less than or equal to 4? Tell me this value from this part of the table. Yes, what is probability x less than or equal to 4? Yes, 0.8358. Thank you. Now you know how to read the table, okay? Okay, let's try another one. What is the probability? Next is greater than or equal to seven. Greater than or equal to seven. It will be easy if you write down the possible values. Greater than or equal 7 means 7, 8, 9, up to 15. Okay. So the complement is all the way up to 6. 7 is included. The, the, the complement is all the way up to 6. So what do you do? You do up to 6. Right. Because 7 is included. The complement is up to 6. Can you read this one? Px less than or equal 6. Yes. Okay, so 6 is point nine eight one nine. So if you do 1 minus, what do you get? Should be 0 0.0181. Okay. 0 0.0181. So check whether you can get this answer. So those who got uh, different values, uh, can you understand where you did wrong? Okay. Let's try another one. I want Px less than uh, greater than 2. X greater than 2. Okay, who can tell me the answer? Yes. Ashini, you are correct. 1 minus 0 0.3980, yes, because if you need greater than 2, 2 is not included, so you need everything uh, 3 up to 15. This is what you need. So the complement will be up to 2. So this is 1 minus Px less than or equal to 2. So see the difference between equal sign included and not, right? So x up to 2 is here. Ready? See? 0 0.3980. 
which is point six zero two. Okay, so thanks for those who provide the answers. Right. Now let's do something different. Can you find the probability x is in between three and six, including both? How do you do this one? Yes, can you try this one? Three up to six. Okay, so let's write down the possible values and see how we can get it. Up to 50, okay. Now what do we need? We need three up to six, including there. This is the area we need, okay. Now, if you read the table up to six, what will happen? You get everything from zero up to six. But you don't want this zero, one, and two. So subtract it. How do you do that? X less than or equal to. You read all the way up to six and then subtract this unwanted zero, one, and two. Can you do that? So when you read PX less than or equal six, that is the value for six in the table, point. 9819 subtract for 2.3980. So you can find the answer. Is this clear to all of you? What is the final answer? 5839. Okay, so be careful with what you subtract. Some of you got uh, different answers. It should be 0.5839. Okay, 0.5839. So is it clear to all of you? Okay. If it is not clear, I can explain again. Is this okay? This is six and three included. Yes, so if you draw this small you know, set and uh, circle what you need, you can easily figure it out what are the values you have to read from the table, okay? Right. One last example, what is the probability x equals mm, eight? x equals eight. What are the values you have to subtract? Yes. What do you do? You have to read up to eight. And then subtract up to seven, the one above it. That is point nine 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 two, subtract point nine nine five eight. Zero point zero zero. Three, four. Okay, so uh, Sandaru had a question. Raise hand. Do you have a question? No? Okay. So I think it's clear how to read the table and everything, right? One, okay, let's try another one. 
Okay. <laughs> so through, okay. Uh, right. Now my random variable x follows binomial with number of trials 15, same table. But now my probability of success is point three. Can you find x equals Yeah, I'll leave the table for you. Note down the question, six equals five, less than or equal eight, greater than two. The probability of success is 0.3. Okay, who has the answers for the first one x equals five what is the answer point two zero six one yes how do you find it you read x less than or equal five and subtract the one about it, which is 0.7216 minus 0.5155. So it will be 2061. Okay, yes, you got it. What about this one? X less than or equal eight, straight away you can get it from the table. 0 0.9848, yes, 0 0.9848. This is the easiest one. When you read the table, that is what you get. X greater than two? X greater than two? So you need everything greater than two. So two is not included. Everything about three. So you do the complement will be x less than or equal to two. So what is that? Point one two six eight. So it is eight seven three two. Yes. So I guess it is clear to all of you, right? So practice with uh, reading the table because for the next distribution also, you need that practice. Okay, so that is the binomial. So again, when do you use the binomial distribution? When your random variable has only two possible outcomes and number of trials, you already know it and the trials are independent and the probability of success is same for all the trials. If any of these conditions are violated, at least one of these conditions are violated, then you cannot use the binomial distribution. Okay, right. So the last distribution that we are going to look at under the discrete case is the Poisson. Okay, now Poisson is something different compared to the previous distribution. This is where we talk about rates. That means you measure the number of 
successes, let's see, per maybe unit time or maybe per unit area. It will be uh, depend on the context, okay? So you find a rate, say here are some examples. Number of vehicles or number of cars passing a junction per hour. So you see the rate per hour unit. Another one, number of uh, seeds germinated per square feet. It means you have plots of one square feet per square feet, how many number of seeds are germinated, right? So those are the rates. Okay, another one, let's say um, number of telephone calls received per day, right? Something like that. So these type of variables, you can um, describe them as a Poisson distribution. In this one, you have only one parameter. See, only one parameter exists the random variable. This lambda is called the rate parameter, okay? And here is the equation. Again, you don't have to memorize it. It has a factorial e to the terms and everything, but uh, if you want, you can do the hand calculations, but we have the tables again. Okay, so here's a Poisson table, very similar to the binomial. You have lambda for several lambdas, different x's. Okay, there are, this is only a part of the uh, Poisson table, but there are tables available for different lambdas, okay? But uh, just for once, and here you see the mean and the variance of uh, Poisson distribution, and they are the same lambda. This is something special. Both mean and the variance are same for a Poisson distribution. And possible values that X can get is zero, one, two, up to infinity, okay? There's no end, you can go up to infinity, see? You can go up to infinity. So here's an example. Suppose the book has four typos per page. So that is the rate, four per page. So what is lambda? Four per page. If you select a page select, uh, randomly, what is the probability that there are two errors? So what is your X? Your random variable is the number of Errors, that is our success. So what is X equals to? You use this example, this, uh, if you use the equation, lambda is four, X is two, see? E to the negative lambda is four, divide by two factorial. You can use a calculator and find this value, okay? And then if you want to find the probability X greater than something, less than something, even in between, you can do that by adding the, um, the values incorporate within that um, inequality, but reading the table is the easiest, right? So this is how you use the equation, but usually you go for the table, okay. Mm. So let's do this example, the next example, and try to read the table. So what does it say? The waiting time at a customer care center has Poisson distribution with lambda five minutes per hour. See, here's the rate. That is lambda five minutes per hour. You have to find the following probabilities, okay. Now, when you get the Poisson table, you find the, the lambda first. So in our case, the lambda is five per hour. So it is the last column that you have to look at. See, lambda equals five. This is the column we have to look at, the last column, okay? And read the table, it's again, um, same as the binomial. You have the cumulative probabilities. It's the same way as you read the binomial table. Let's try P X equals seven. So we have seven, here's seven, right? So if you read the seven, what is it? This is actually X less than or equal seven. So if you want equal seven, what do you do? You subtract one above it. So 
So how do you find this answer? X less than or equal seven. X less than or equal six. Subtract. One about seven six two two. Yes, what is the answer? One zero four four. Thank you. Okay. Then can you try the next one? X less than or equal to five. Now that is the easiest. Less than or equal. You get the value straight away from the table. See. What is it? Point six one six zero. We have to find the next one. X greater than three. Try this one. P X greater than three. Here's the table. You need X greater than three. Yes, what is the answer? Eight, seven, five, three. Yes, how do you get it? If you need greater than three, That means you need everything uh, above four. Three is not included. So you have to do one minus Px less than or equal three, right? Greater than three means above four. So you read up to three, which is two, six, five, zero. Two, six, five, zero. What is the answer? 0 0.7350. Okay. 0 0.7350. Okay. So seems like you all understood how to do it. Okay. Can you find part D? Two up to eight, both not included. Two up to eight. Two not included, eight not included, so it will be three up to seven. Okay, right, three, four up to seven. So how do you find it? You read all the way up to seven and subtract up to two. Okay, two is not included, so two is in the complement. Right, so what are the values? 0. 0.8666 minus 1247. Right? Okay, you can find it. Right? Now let's move on to the part E because it's different. You have to find the probability x greater than 10. Now for 30 minutes, what is your x? the waiting time for a customer. Now this lambda rate is five is per hour. Lambda equals five per hour. Now in the last question, you're asking to find the probability the waiting time is greater than 10 per 30 minutes. Now what do you have to do? 30 minutes, it's not per hour now. So you cannot use, okay, this, you cannot do the calculation like earlier. Okay, so let's see how we can do that. Lambda equals five is per hour. So the, the waiting time, five minutes is defined per hour. If you want to do it per 30 minutes, how do you find the new lambda? Let's say lambda star. If hour is 60 minutes, right? If waiting time is five per 60 minutes, what is the waiting time if it is only 30 minutes? 
then what will be your new lambda? If the waiting time is five for one hour, what is the waiting time if you are going to be there only 30 minutes? That will be half of five because 30 is half of 60 minutes. So this will be 2.5. I think I got the answer, yes, 2.5. So you have to use the new lambda. Whenever your rate changes, you have to find the new lambda and then you have to find the probability. Now your new lambda is 2.5, so I have to read 2.5 column, greater than 10. So that will be one minus p x less than or equal to 10 with lambda 2.5. So here's 2.5 and here's 10, 0.9999. That will be one minus 0.9999, which is going to be zero zero one. Okay, is that clear to all of you how to find the new lambda? Okay. Right, any questions so far? Anything unclear, the binomial Poisson distributions? Okay, so uh, it's 3.20, so we don't have enough time to do the assignment. Therefore, I will upload this as the next assignment in your uh, uh, classroom. Right, so this is a Poisson distribution assignment. Um, you will be able to use the same table and find the answers. Okay, so you need uh, part D. Someone asked me to explain part D again. Okay, all right, I'll explain it again. So your part D is you need your part D. I'll write it again. Part D is you need X in between two and eight, but none of them are included. See, you don't see the equal sign. So if we write our sample space, and so on, we need X to be in between two and eight, but two is not included, eight is not included. Everything about two, but not included two, it will be about three. Less than eight, but eight not included. So it is up to seven. So you need the values from three to seven. Okay, less than eight is less than seven or equal to seven. Greater than two is starting from three and up. Therefore, what you need is only three up to seven, three, four, five, six, seven. So you have to read up to seven. And then subtract the unnecessary part. Unnecessary part starts at two. Okay, so that is what we did. Okay, x less than or equal seven is, see here's seven, point eight six six six. And two, point one two four seven, see? Right, so you get rid of or subtract the unwanted set. So you end up with the final answer. Is that clear now? Okay, so you have to be careful with the equal signs, not equal values, right? It's always good if you can write your set like this, then easily you can find the limits where you have to start and subtract. Is that clear now? Rajita, is it clear to you now? Okay, great. Right, so this uh, assignment, I'll uh, upload it as a, sever uh, a separate document as an assignment. So you can try this one and I'll give you one week to uh, complete it, right? So do you have any other questions before we finish for today? Okay, then next time we are going to look at the continuous type of distribution. And that is something very important where we are going to learn about the normal distribution, Z scores and so on, which will be used uh, in our later chapters like regression analysis, ANOVA, uh, hypothesis testing, and all those uh, later topics. Okay, so therefore, uh, next um, lesson is very, very important. And if you don't have any questions, I'm going to um, finish the lesson for today.